everyone in this video we are going to discuss about pseudogenes now before going into that let's have a brief outline about a gene a gene is basically a sequence of dna which codes for a protein a sequence of dna which codes for a protein is a gene so how that is done suppose this is a dna molecule this is the gene from the gene by transcription mrna is formed and from it by translation protein is formed now coming to the discussion of pseudogenes so in the name pseudo is there so pseudo means false so false genes these are basically sequence of the dna which structurally resembles a gene but as in the name there is pseudo so they do not code for a protein so pseudo genes are sequence of a dna molecule which structurally resembles a gene but is not capable of coding a protein so we can say that pseudo genes are non functional genes hence pseudo genes can also be known as junk dna now coming to the origin or formation of pseudo genes so the pseudo genes are formed by decay of genes so pseudo genes are formed by a decay of genes which occur through evolution and this decay occurs by various mutations like point mutations then insertions and deletions then frame shift mutations which ultimately leads to misplaced stop codons but one thing must be remembered is that most pseudo genes get transcribed to an rna okay so many of the pseudo genes will get transcribed to an rna but that rna will not form a protein rna will not form a protein okay now this defect this defect in the pseudo genes that is all these dk forms it can occur either in the coding or in the regulatory region of a gene next coming to the types of pseudo genes now so pseudo genes are of two types unprocessed and processed Proce unprocessed pseudo genes can be divided into unitary and duplicated now what are unitary pseudo genes unitary pseudo genes suppose this was my dna molecule this is my gene this was this is my gene now via any of the dk mechanisms which i discussed previously the gene can get non functional the gene can become non functional okay so this is basically a unitary pseudo gene that is the parent gene is becoming non functional next coming to duplicated pseudo genes what happens suppose this is my parent gene now the gene is duplicated the gene is duplicated now this gene this gene various decay mechanisms will occur and ultimately this gene will get become non functional and form a pseudo gene okay so the parent gene is intact parent gene is intact 
So what we can say about the duplicated pseudogenes? The parent gene is duplicated and the duplicate becomes non-functional. Next coming to processed pseudogenes. So some sort of processing occurs of the genes. What happens? Suppose this is my DNA molecule and this is the gene. That gene forms an RNA. mRNA is formed from the gene. Now from this mRNA, a single-stranded cDNA molecule is formed and from it a double-stranded cDNA molecule is formed. Okay. Now, in this double-stranded DNA molecule, this gene became non-functional. So now, the double-stranded, the double-stranded cDNA molecule, double-stranded cDNA molecule, a uh, pseudogene is formed. And this double-stranded DNA molecule gets reintegrated into the genome. at a new location. This new location may be the same or different chromosome. So this gene getting transcribed into an mRNA and from mRNA via reverse transcription forming a cDNA which is getting incorporated into a genome at a different location. This is known as retrotransposition. So and during this retrotransposition in the cDNA molecule, a pseudogene is formed. Okay, so basically, process pseudogenes are formed by retrotransposition. Some other points about pseudogenes is that the pseudogenes are ubiquitous, ubiquitous and abundant in the genome, and the distribution of these pseudogenes is completely random okay so the pseudogenes are abundant in the genome and they are randomly distributed in the genome that is they can be present at a particular location in person one the same pseudogene can be present at a different position in person two okay one more thing to remember is that in the unprocessed pseudogenes unprocessed pseudogenes the intron exon structure is intact But in case of processed pseudogenes, only the exon is there because it is basically the defect is occurring in the cDNA. So only exon is there. Next, coming to the mechanism of action of the pseudogenes or the role of the pseudogenes. Basically, the pseudogenes, they interact with their functional genes and they regulate different biochemical processes in the cells. This is done via regulation of gene expression by the pseudogenes. How this occurs? Several mechanisms of gene expression regulation by the pseudogenes. First is, suppose this is the DNA molecule this was the gene, this is my pseudogene. So from the gene, mRNA is produced, from the pseudogene, another RNA molecule is produced. Suppose let's take it like this and let's take the mRNA like this. So now what will happen? This RNA, it will bind with this mRNA. Okay, so like this. So this RNA from the pseudogene, it will bind to this mRNA and it will interfere with the translation of this RNA. So, translational interference, gene silencing. So, this RNA from the pseudogene, it will bind with the mRNA and it will interfere with the translation. So, no translation will occur from the mRNA. The next mechanism is Suppose this was the pseudogene, from it RNA is produced, this RNA 
gets folded into a hairpin structure which finally forms a SI RNA that is small interfering RNA and this type of RNA molecule what they do is RNA interference RNA interference it's a separate topic it's a sort of a gene silencing what it does basically in the this SI RNA they will bind to an mRNA molecule it will either cause degradation of the mRNA or it will inhibit translation so here also the protein is not expressed a sort of a gene silencing third mechanism is this is the gene pseudogene so RNA from the pseudogene this is the mRNA from the gene now competition occurs for the factors which regulate mRNA stability. So as this RNA from the pseudogene will be similar to this mRNA, this RNA will compete for the factors which regulate the stability of this mRNA molecule. Naturally, it will lead to alteration in levels of mRNA. So here also translation will be regulated. So these three mechanisms the translation is regulated via the pseudogenes. So the pseudogenes regulates expression of genes like tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes. regulated via these pseudogenes. Next coming to the identification of pseudogenes. How are the pseudogenes identified? Via techniques like pseudo pipe, pseudo finder, retro finder. These techniques helps to identify pseudogenes. Transcribed pseudogenes are identified by RNA sequencing, then microarrays, and then real time PCR. Okay, so these are the various identification techniques of pseudogenes. Now, clinical importance of pseudogenes pseudogenes as diagnostic markers. Pseudogenes as diagnostic markers. Certain examples, two examples. One is increased levels of the pseudogenes SUMO1P3 in certain gastric cancer. So increased levels of this pseudogene in gastric cancer and decreased level of another pseudogene known as P10P1. It also occurs in certain gastric cancers. So two important pseudogenes acting as diagnostic markers, one is SUMO1P3 and another is P10P1, P10P1, okay. So that is all in short about a discussion of pseudogenes. If you like this video, please click on the like button, do share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.